Well, uh, at the outset, uh, thank you so much, uh, Argus ed Education, for inviting me. Dr. Parmarth Rajsena, the honorable guest on the dais, the dignitaries on the dais, the invitees for the event today, students and those who are listening to Argus uh, live in and around Odisha and the country. A uh, very hearty welcome to each one of you for this uh, discussion and the event today. Well, uh, my job has become a little simpler by uh, the two previous speakers speaking about NEP 2020 and the ma'am spoke about evolution of technology. Well, I, I uh, would like to first uh, touch upon some facts and figures for this house and then uh, briefly take you down uh, for next two to three decades how the technology is going to evolve and, and uh, try and see, uh, or I will in a quick time try and uh, bring together that this evolution of technology which is going to take place in the next two to three decades, what is the opportunity and the challenge for India and how we are plugging this opportunity and challenge by NEP 2020. Well, uh, some figures, most of us keep knowing, keep talking about it. Uh, I just want to touch upon some very important aspects of these figures. First and foremost is, there is a figure known as median age of a country. India is talked about as median age as, as 29 years, China as 39 years, we have Japan around 49 years or 50 years, and Europe a little higher than this. Now, for the information of all of us, uh, uh, you know, it's the age of the median age of the nation where bulk of our population resides. So what does it mean? It means that bulk of India is much younger than China, Japan, Europe, and rest of the world. So how, how does it impact? It definitely impacts in one area that bulk of India is in the learning stage now. So that means our younger population is the one which is giving us the opportunity to connect or fill up this gap which we are going to talk of. One more important thing which I want to touch upon is, you know, the figure or the term which is generally used is Generation Z, which is commonly being referred as Gen Z these days. If you look at the ratio of Gen Z around the globe, India has the highest ratio of Gen Z today in the world. That means the generation which is actually driving the technology or the evolution across the globe, we have the highest percentage of that with us. Now, these are some of the figures which talk of opportunity which India has. Well, another thing which is very commonly talked of is that in the age bracket of 18 to 35, we have roughly about 600 million people in residing in our country. Another very important figure which is going to impact the way, uh, you know, we are going to utilize uh, this human resource in times to come. Well, uh, uh, ma'am spoke about some technology, the evolution which is taking place. I would like to take you down uh, and imagine two to three decades from now, what is going to be the scenario as far as technology is concerned? How? the technology will drive uh, this world. Now, another important thing which is going to happen is the pace at which the evolution of technology is taking place, what we saw in last about four to five decades, is going to become phenomenal in next two to three decades. It will be so fast that we won't imagine after another decade plus Everything around us will change. And the first and foremost thing is, what is going to change is the connectivity. We carry 
a cell phone around, this is going to get totally transformed. We are going to wear connectivity, we are not going to carry connectivity. It will be non-evasive connectivity which all of us will carry along. That means you would have some electrons floating around your body which will connect you with the rest of the world. Now, how does it impact the life? Well, it impacts the lives in every and each aspect. She spoke about Meta. If you look at uh, the education sector in times to come, every child will have about four to five to seven avatars, and these avatars will float around in the knowledge domain and pick up knowledge. As far as knowledge gaining is concerned, there are research which are already on. Soon we are going to have a breakthrough in that where you will find that we are going to connect with the human logic and this connectivity to human logic will come through the communication I carry with me. That means knowledge will be straight embedded into my logic. And efforts are on to convert knowledge into wisdom. This is what human brain does, what technology has not been able to do. So, in times to come, in next about decade plus to two decades, we'll have an interface of human brain with the knowledge which is residing in the rest of the world. We'll have an interface which will convert this through AI into wisdom. So what is going to, how is it going to impact the human learning? Well, human learning will get totally transformed. We're going to download things, convert into wisdom, and very short time, you will find that everybody will gain knowledge and try and understand how things are going around. So with this pace of gaining knowledge, obviously the way we interact and do things will also get changed. And this will then change the job market, this will then change the socio-economic culture around the globe, this will then change how human beings behave. So what I want to bring out is that technology is going to totally drive this revolution which is going to be absolutely a uh, 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 dynamic change happening in the socio-economic environment along the globe. And this drive which is going to take place will actually transform how human beings live, interact, and grow or evolve. Now, as the subject I've been given was to talk of how NEP is going to fill up this, that's why I gave some figures. Now, across the globe, what's going to happen? Across the globe, there is a need now to have the human race adapt or acquire this technology change or transformation taking place as fast as possible. Now, that is where the dividend of age or the young age which India has comes in. And that is where India has an advantage to train this workforce which we have to play a major role in this technology transformation or the life transformation which is going to take place across the globe. Now that is where the NEP 2020 is the one which is going to bring in a dramatic shift in the way the young generation is being trained and taught across a country. And as we see, as uh, has been brought out, NEP 2020 actually has broken down a age-old, very structured teaching oblique uh, training pedagogy which was going on. And it has now tried to reframe it in the most I would say adaptable way which suits the requirement of next two to three decades. And the requirement of next two to three decades is not the structured degrees like we did BCom, BA, BSc, BTech, MTech, MCA, BCA, BBA. But it's more to do with what's the demand which is coming from the industry, what's the demand which is coming from the environment, how can a young child pick up things of his interest things which the industry want, frame around it, learn and go. It also enables the younger generation 
to adapt certain skill sets which are very, very important, which some of us in our generation picked up at much later in our age. So it enables a young man to actually pick up them at much younger age. It also enables individuals to pick up vocational skill sets, which some of our ancestors picked up while they were living around in villages. They had to interact with the environment. So they picked up these vocational skills, which went missing suddenly because we transformed to urban life, and suddenly these skill sets were gone. It also enables an individual to actually not disengage from his mother language or mother tongue, pick up another mother tongue or another language and try and learn. It actually says that as you grow with your mother, you have a mother tongue. That's the best way to train or teach a child. So it enables, the policy enables that let the child be taught in the language he understands the best. That's his mother language or that's his mother tongue. And from there on, bring him to a stage where he finds that he's gained enough to disengage with mother tongue and then adapt to a few more languages so that he's become globally available. So NEP 2020 in brief is actually now providing us a structure to pick up a child who's native of India, enable him in his own mother language, bring him to a global stage, and thereafter train him into the technology which is evolutionary, which takes him to what the global village wants. So if you, if you ask me to sum up, I would say that NEP 2020 definitely act in very many ways uh, in connecting the rural India with the global world. The gap was that rural India was getting left behind the technology evolution and the education which was taking place. So it enables the education to have inroads into rural India, bring that into the mainframe, take larger percentage of Indian population onto global arena. I will just finish by saying that there are certain more figures which we keep talking of, and, and there, is, there is a figure known as, uh, you know, gross enrollment ratio, GER. Most of you must be reading it. This figure runs very low in India as far as schools is concerned, runs further low as far as higher education is concerned. You find just about, in some states, it's about 60 to 70 percent. In some states, it's less than 50 percent of the children actually finish schooling. And just about 30 percent of these who finish schooling actually go into higher education and finish it. The NEP 2020 attempts to bring this school education to almost 100 percent of GER and cross 50% as far as higher education is concerned. Now, that can only happen when we have inroads into rural India, enable education in the language which is spoken best in the rural areas. That's how I brought out that point of mother tongue. Now, there are a lot of schools which used to say earlier that learn international language, you will grow global. But there are various models available across the globe where you find that bulk of the education in those countries going on in mother tongue. Only at much later stage, they try and become global. Next door neighbor, China is a big example. France is another example. So you have the successful models which are available. So I finish by saying that, well, NEP enables us to transform bulk of India onto this education ecospace. Thank you, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you so much.